Welcome to this session on how to create a website with no code by me, a web designer. So let's just jump right in into what we are going to be learning together. We're going to be learning how to build a website with no code. So by the end of this session, you will be able to create a professional looking website all by yourself. So let's go a little bit deeper into what we're going to go over. Here is our outline. So first we're going to start with our website strategy. Without a strategy, we're sort of just going in any direction while we're building our website. So we need to make sure we ask ourselves the tough questions before we even start building. Next, we're gonna go over how the internet works. So this is going to be really important so that we know who we have to pay, how much we have to pay them, and how we can really build our website on top of existing platforms and services. Next, we're gonna talk about WordPress and Elementor because that is really going to be how we are building the majority of our site. And then using WordPress and Elementor, we're gonna build a templated site in about 10 minutes that you will be able to do as well for your business or for any of your clients. Then because we're editing these templated websites, we wanna make sure that we all have a good understanding of the very basics of user experience because we want to make sure that even after we edit the site, the site is still perfectly set up to solve all of the problems that we have established in our website strategy session. And then as always, I will always be here for questions as well. So here's everything we're going over in this session, but before we start, who am I? My name is Nathan Minns and I'm here to teach you Elementor and WordPress. I'm based in Columbus, Ohio, and after having a full-time job as a site builder and web designer using Elementor and WordPress, now I'm a freelancer building client websites. I'm also an actor, speaker, and I create startups as well. Now, I use WordPress and Elementor pretty much every day in my work, but it really wasn't always like that. In 2015, when I was first starting out my acting career, I was told that I needed an actor website. So I Googled how to make a website and WordPress came up. It was very confusing and I really did not understand it. And this was the first website that I ever made. I would like to call special attention to one thing on this site that if you look right here, you can see a resume button. I really don't know why that was there, but that is actually how the site looked. So this was the first site that I ever made. Um, and I'm very happy to say that I have grown a lot since here. After I made this site, I made another site for a nonprofit that I work with and I met a couple people and I ended up getting a job at a venture studio. Basically, venture studios create a variety of startups. So as part of my job, anytime we needed a website, I became one of the people that were the go-to website guys that if we were starting a new project, a new company, and we needed a website, they would ask me to create that website. So through this, I got a lot of practice of building sites quickly while making them still look professional and in a lot of different industries. So at around the same time I was working at this venture studio, I made my freelancing official by founding Blue Drop Design. Blue Drop Design is where I house all of my website clients. So I officially filed my LLC. In the next year, I got a job at a web design agency where I did a lot of work around processes with creating websites with no code. And then, in this last year, in 2021, I created a course and I have since had over 10,000 students. So that brings us to today where you can really focus on your business and create a website pretty quickly. So now let's go through a couple questions before you really start your website. 
The first one is pretty obvious, but it's why are we doing this? A lot of times people create websites just so they can have a website. We want to understand why a Facebook page or a LinkedIn page isn't going to do just as well as us having a website. So we want to understand why we're doing this, but we also need to understand who we're doing this for. So if we're making a site with the demographics of our user, that is a 70 year old man living in Ohio versus a 20 year old female living in California. Those sites, even if they sell the same product are likely going to look a little different. So before we even start to build our site, we need to do a little bit of work onto who our end user is and who we're really trying to sell to. So that way we can make a site that really appeals to that demographic. Next, we need to know what value is this site going to provide? And that really comes in a couple different areas. First, what value do we need it to provide to the user? So when the user comes to our site, what are they going to get out of that experience? And then the one that most people think about is what is the business going to get out of having this website? Maybe we're trying to get sales or we're trying to get newsletters, signups, um, or something else. But either way, we need to establish what value we're expecting it to provide. And on top of that, how we're going to measure if that is successful. Because if we don't actually measure it, then we won't really know if what we did worked. And we need to make sure that we set up goals that can be measured and we can actually watch. And then this last one always really gets us because the question of what can we realistically do pops up all the time. I have had a number of clients tell me that they want a website that looks exactly like the New York Times. They want it to have login functionality. They want subscription and e-commerce. They want the paywalls that New York Times has, and they really want the whole package. And what I normally tell them is that yes, we can build that. That is something that I can build, but we can't do it for $200. We're going to need a little bit more money to do that. So when we're looking at what can we realistically do, we need to approach it on a couple different fronts. First, how much money do we have? We need to know what we should really set our expectations at. And then we also need to ask ourselves, how fast do we need to get this out? Now, I really tend to prefer building sites rather quickly, and I would rather have something out there for the majority of cases. So speed is really important to me, uh, but so is quality. So it's really a trade-off, but we have to consistently be asking ourselves, what can we realistically do with this time frame and this budget and really go from there? Now, next we're gonna get into how the internet works and how much that is all going to cost us. So. We have these three parts that we are going to need to deal with to start up our website. We have the domain, we have the website hosting, and we have the builder. So we're gonna need all of these three things, so let's go through each one of these with what it is and how much it's going to cost us. First, we have this domain. This is the URL of your website. So this is the nathanmins.com. This is what you type into your browser your Chrome, Safari, Firefox, whichever browser you use, this is what the end user is going to type in to their browser. This can really vary a lot depending on a lot of different factors, but in general, this is going to cost us about $25 a year. So that is a really good number just to estimate and you may be a little bit higher or likely lower than that. Next, we have our website hosting. So this holds all of the files for your website. So for example, when a user types in nathanmins.com, that nathanmins.com needs to find the website host and ask that host what files are at this website. What is the content of this website? The website host hears that and then sends back all of the files for the website so the end user can actually see and interact with your website. Now, generally this is 20 to $100 a year, but this can vary a ton by the provider you choose. 
Now, in my maybe controversial opinion, the best hosting is easy to set up and requires little maintenance. We wanna get you working on your business, working on the front end of your website. So what we want out of a website host is really just something that purely works. It works so well that we never have to worry about it. We don't have to deal with it. Our website's always gonna be up. It's going to be running well. So for that reason, I recommend Hostinger, but this course is able to be completed with a variety of hosting. So if you want to use your own hosting, that is totally fine. But now I have a quick rant on Hostinger, and I'm also going to walk you through how you can set up an account on Hostinger. So Hostinger has a very high uptime, a 99.9% .9 uptime guaranteed. So this means your website will be up and running so users can get to it 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, which is pretty good. Now we have 24-7 support. Now for this, I wanted to make sure that their support was fast and accurate and doing their job well because I've honestly had those problems with other providers. So I tested them and actually timed them and it was an eight minutes response time. So from when I submitted my first ticket to an actual human responding, it was only eight minutes, which is again, quite high. Hostinger is incredibly easy to use. So even though you're a beginner, this website is really made for beginners. So it's pretty easy to navigate. You'll also get a free SSL. So that is like the little lock that appears. And if you don't have it, basically Chrome uh, will say, this website is not secure. Are you sure you want to visit it? So really it's sort of necessary to have an SSL at this point in the age of the internet, in my opinion. So you get a free SSL as well. Hostinger has all of their stats up so you can view their stats. Let's take a look right now. So looking at hosting your stats, we can see right now all systems are operational and we can view all of their uptime and see it's pretty good um, and see all of this from the last 90 days. So what this is telling me is that they are transparent in their stats, uh, which I really like because I find a lot of companies are trying to bury where they make mistakes, but you really can't bury this, especially because I'm pretty sure this is automated. So like if they mess up, it's going to be displayed here and that's going to impact if people sign up. They also have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if nothing else, you can buy a domain to finish this course or any other course. Um, and then within 30 days, cancel it. And you basically just got free hosting for a month. Um, ideally, yeah, you keep it for a long time. Um, but this 30 day money back guarantee helps you to make sure that hosting is right for you. And if it's not, it's like pretty easy to switch hosting providers. So it's in hosting best interest to keep you happy as a customer and not let you leave. Hosting is definitely a solid choice for your first website or any website after that. And not only because of all these features I've mentioned, but they're also incredibly inexpensive. So that's the reason I recommend Hostinger. You can finish the rest of this course in this uh, workshop with any other hosting provider, but this is the one that uh, I enjoy and, and I have an account with. Now, here's a little pro tip. From Hostinger or any other hosting provider you go with, buying the domain and website host from the same company is gonna make your life a lot easier. If you don't wanna deal with any of the technical things, then just buy it from the same company. Yes, you can buy it from a different domain provider, but I would really recommend, especially for your first website, just buy them from the same place. Now, let's sign up together. There is a discount code if you go to the last lecture of this course, but you don't have to. If you just wanna sign up to finish the course like this, then that is totally okay too. This isn't going to actually impact how you finish the course. It just gives you 7% off. So let's go and sign up. Now here's Hostinger's website. I'm going to assume that you're going to finish the rest of this course and you're going to do a WordPress website. So we're going to go into hosting and just go down to WordPress hosting. So basically we can skip a lot of this stuff, um, but basically 
we can see we have one website, we can get an email account, free SSL, and we get managed WordPress. So you can see this drop down here, but basically it helps you install and manage WordPress a little easier. It's not necessary, but it's definitely helpful. So at this 199 price point, this is the one I recommend. We can also go, if you don't want that, you can go into hosting and go to uh, just typical web hosting and it'll do a very similar thing. But this is nice because you can have your website host help manage the WordPress site. So you don't really have to deal with a lot of this. So let's just go right here. Again, we can only do one website on this and you can see the trade-offs you're making pretty easily here. But if you're just doing your first site, I recommend this option. So let's hit select there. And then their signup flow is like pretty easy. So we are going to go with this 48 months option. Um, and the reason for this is really just that I've never seen a hosting provider give uh, 48 months besides Hostinger. I've been a customer of a variety of hosting providers, but this isn't really a thing. At most, I've seen a pretty hefty discount, but it's only for the first year. So if you're pretty confident that your site is going to last four years, I would go this route. But you know, if not, then I would recommend going with whichever one fits best. But if you could do 12 months, it's $55. If you double that, it's only like $10 more. And then doubling that is only $20 more. So at least when I'm signing up for hosting, this is the one I go with, but really you can choose any hosting you want. Now let's scroll down into this payment. So we're gonna pay with a credit card. Yep, we have this SSL certification. We have this 80% discount that's on right now. And then for this coupon, I'm just going to put in Nathan Min's seven, which is going to give another 7% off. So that's just, if you wanna save some more money, there you go. Now I'm gonna input this and I'm gonna hit submit secure payment. So I'll see you on the next screen. Now I have submitted my payment. So now I have an account. So let's get started. So let's start now. Let's create this WordPress account because our site is going to be on WordPress and it's going to come with WordPress installed. So let's say this is my administrator email and then I will set another password. So that'll be the same password for this. Then I'll hit continue. Now it asks me which look I prefer. We can use this, but I really prefer to use Elementor because then I can control everything with the site, which we'll get into a little bit later. But we'll hit skip, I don't need a template. Now, if you have used an existing domain, then you can just connect it here. But if you haven't, we will just buy a domain. We will hit, I am a test website. Yay, yay. Dot com. Let's search for that. And look at that. I am a website test dot yay, yay dot com is available. And it is $10 a year. So let's just click buy now. We'll do one year for this. And then um, we are going to want to add this who is privacy because basically when you buy a domain, your information will be public to the world unless you hide this information. So when people look up your website on who is, instead of it being your information, it'll actually be Hostinger's information or another third party's information. I really recommend doing this. I've done this with every website I think I've ever had for the last like six years. Um, so I find this to be very important and my privacy to be important. So I really recommend you do this. So now we have $18 for this domain and we will complete this payment. Great, so now we have our domain. Let's go into next steps. Now I have to go through and give them some more information about me so that this website is tied to a person even if that information isn't going to be public. They still need to have this information. So I live in the United States. This is a company. And now we have all of these contact details. I'm sure you all know how to fill out a form like this. So I will see you on the next screen one more time. And now we're pretty much done. Our server location is North America. 
we can change this to be basically wherever is closest to your users. Um, but this is great for me. So um, I will just hit cancel there. And then we have my domain, WordPress, and then my admin e email. So let's finish our setup. Now we are doing our setup. It's gonna take less than three minutes here. So what's happening now is all of the technical things that you would have to deal with potentially if you did it on your own. So this is very nice that your hosting provider is just doing it for you and you can just watch it happen. Great, and just in that couple minutes, our website is now totally ready. So let's just visit the website, see if it works. It's pretty early, so oftentimes it doesn't work immediately, but it should work like within a couple hours. So that is like pretty standard, but we'll see if this one works. It looks like it is not right now, but we will come back to it. So from here, I can go straight into this WordPress dashboard and manage WordPress, which we're gonna go over a little bit later. But we can go to this control panel to just to see what else Hostinger has for us. Now you can see like we're pretty much done with this hosting provider, which is honestly ideal to me. I don't enjoy doing the back end of websites very much. So I want my hosting provider just to like do it for me and then I never have to deal with it. So as you can see here, like all I have left is to do this SSL uh, certificate activation. And it seems like pretty much everything else I'm like all set up. So let's hit set up. We'll install an SSL certificate and then we'll click install SSL. Now, in the meantime, while we're doing this, let's go back and see if our website loads now. Look at that. Uh, now this is a WordPress website. So now this website is available for anyone on the internet to see. So in the entire world, people can now see your company website, which is still sort of mind boggling to me. But in like, what, 15 minutes, we were able to get our site set up, which is like pretty fast compared to other hosting providers I've used. Usually this step takes a little bit of time for them to get it to actually be at a point where it's up and running. So this SSL is updating or installing right now. So let's reload the page, see if it's done. So this SSL is still installing, but we don't really need to worry about that. It'll be installed. You can click around on this side. I already have an email account that I'm gonna use, so I don't have to set that up. But in this hosting tab, we can go through most of the things we need. Or for me, I really like this home tab where I can just see my domains, see all my emails, all the hosting I have. So I find this to be pretty helpful. Now, again, you don't have to use Hostinger, but this is what I like. It's very easy to use. So this is what I recommend. You don't have to use it though. Now that we've done all of this hosting bits, let's go back and finish um, the domain, website hosting, and builder section. So the last thing we're gonna need is our builder. So this is pretty self-explanatory. This is how we actually build the website. For us, like we just saw, WordPress is what we're gonna use. WordPress is free. And then Elementor is freemium. So it can be free, you can pay a little bit for it. Um, but either way, like this is not very expensive. And we are going to go through how to do both of these later in this course. So in total then, we are paying about $60 per year for our website. This can be higher or lower depending on the hosting plan you choose, where you buy your domain and how much that domain is. And if you buy Elementor or how you set it all up, but I would allocate around $60 for your website if I were you. And just as a reminder, you have to buy all of these things or do it in some way for any website you make. So it's an important note that this isn't just for this website or right now, this is like how you have to build it. So now that we have done our domain and hosting, let's really get into the builder section which is really what a lot of the rest of this course is gonna be on, and we can get started on WordPress. Right before that though, let's just keep ourselves grounded on this outline. So we've done our website strategy, we now know how the internet works, and we've signed up for hosting. 
So now we're gonna go over WordPress and Elementor using templates and then the basics of user experience. And then at the end, of course, we will always have questions and you can always ask questions throughout the course as well. So let's jump into what is WordPress and why do we use it? So WordPress helps you manage your website's content. It is a CMS, content management system. So what percent of the internet do you think WordPress powers? Just take a second and just think about how much you think that it powers right now. All right, I'm gonna say that you took that second um, and the answer is 40%. 40% of the internet is powered by WordPress. So clearly there's something going on. But I know that when I heard that, the first thing I thought was, are these just 40% of like random websites throughout the internet? Or are there really notable websites? Well, let's go through a couple notable ones. First, we have whitehouse.gov. We have Katy Perry's website, TechCrunch, Usain Bolt, we have the Rolling Stones, we have the Walt Disney Company, we have Angry Birds, and my personal favorite is that we have Snoop Dogg. So Snoop Dogg's website is also based on WordPress. So now that we've seen that there's clearly some power going on in WordPress, now we have to ask the question, why do we use WordPress and why are they using WordPress? Well, first is a really easy one, it's free. So it is totally free to use, so you don't have to worry about that at all. And also it is open source. So basically what that means is anyone can submit bug fixes um, and make sure that the software is working well for everybody. So there's tens of thousands of developers that work on this software that really makes it pretty top notch. So because so many different kinds of people work on this software and it's used by so many people, it's very flexible. And what that means is basically you can create a marketing website or you can create an e-commerce website. You could have a subscription website or a social media platform. You could even make something that resembles Airbnb. So this software is very flexible uh, and it's very scalable too. So if you ever change your mind and you wanna change what your website looks like, it's very easy to redesign something on WordPress. So that way we don't have to start from scratch every time we do it. And then it's also already optimized for search engines. So a lot of the things that you would have to do manually if you just built your site from the ground, WordPress already takes care of a lot of that. So this is a pretty solid reason as well. And then it's really easy to install. So once you sign up for your hosting provider, so you sign up for your domain and your hosting provider. It's very easy to set up WordPress. Usually there are just a couple buttons that you can see that say, I want to install WordPress and it'll be installed. Usually if you pick one of the major hosts, it tends to be within two clicks and maybe five minutes to install WordPress. And you don't have to do any of the technical stuff. Um, so it is really great and you know it's pretty easy to work with. So now let's go over a demo on how to use WordPress. We've talked about all the theoretical things around WordPress and websites, but let's really get into it now. So now we're on to our WordPress demo. So to get started, we're on this website. This is my personal website. To get into WordPress, we're gonna go up to this URL bar. We're gonna type in forward slash wp dash admin and hit enter. Now this is going to typically bring us to a login page, but because I'm already logged in, it's bringing us into the WordPress backend. So there are a lot of different things going on on this WordPress backend, but we're going to focus on just the really important pieces that I think you need to know to be able to create your own website. Of course, this isn't going to be all inclusive, but it is going to get you set up to learn how to use everything. So when we log in, we're, we land on this dashboard page, but it is pretty useless. So we're going to go straight onward into our pages because this is a very common request of how do I create new pages? So if we wanna create a new page, we can click on pages 
And this is a list of all of my different pages on my website. So if we wanna add a new one, we can just go right up here to add new. I'll open it in a new tab. So it's pretty easy to see how everything is structured. If we want to add a title, we can just add Nathan is awesome. And then this is going to be the title of our page. We don't actually need to type anything in this block because we're going to be creating our websites with Elementor. So just to create the page, all we have to do is say Nathan is awesome and then we can hit publish. It'll ask us again and we hit publish one more time. And that is all we have to do to create the page in WordPress. Later down the line, we're going to talk about doing everything in Elementor, but this is how you would initially create a page. If we go back, we can do the exact same thing for blog posts. So if we open that up in a new window as well, we can see all of these different blog posts and then we can click on add new and it's gonna look very similar to our pages. Again, we can write Nathan is awesome. And for this one, we're actually going to write all of our content in general in here. So we can write Nathan is awesome, super awesome. And of course we can copy paste this because we really think Nathan is awesome. And all we have to do here is hit publish and it'll ask us one more time if we wanna publish. And then after we publish, this blog post is going to be live on our website. Now that is how the pages work, but something that causes a lot of confusion is the theme. So inside of WordPress, you can think of the theme as the wood of your house. It gives the main structure beyond what WordPress natively provides. So to get to themes, we're going to go to appearance and then click on themes. Now there are a ton of different themes. Let's click on add new so that we can see all of the different themes. If we just look through here, there are so many different themes that are very customizable. Um, and if we look for one that for a lawyer, let's say, we have all of these themes that are designed exclusively for lawyers. Of course, anyone can use them, but they were designed for lawyers. Now there are a ton of different themes and I see the value in using one of these themes, but we're gonna go back to themes. Now that we are back on this themes page so we can see the theme that I am using, I want to explain why I'm a huge advocate for Hello by Elementor. As I mentioned before, there are tons of different themes, but because we're going to be making a custom website based on the templates that Elementor provides, we want to be able to customize the look feel and layout of our website entirely. That's why I recommend using Hello, the free theme made by Elementor. Hello is an incredibly light theme. It won't slow down your website like other themes that are a little bit chunky and bloated. It really doesn't offer much at all in terms of styling your website, but it doesn't matter because we're using Elementor and we're styling our entire website in Elementor so we don't need to have the theme do the styling for us. We can do it ourselves and make that styling the perfect use case for us. The other big reason I like using Hello and using Elementor is that when we go through a redesign or if we wanna change something small, it's really easy to add new pages and create a new template yourself or to adjust things on your site or do a full redesign while staying in Elementor. The big benefit here is that your team only has to learn one software and doesn't have to learn a new theme every couple years when you redesign. So we have this theme. Now we're gonna go into plugins. So if we just go on this left sidebar and click on plugins, if we keep with this metaphor of our theme being the wood of the house, then picking what features you want in the house can be your plugins. For your house, you can upgrade your windows, or add a back porch, or even make a finished basement. For WordPress, there are tens of thousands of plugins that will help you do pretty much anything that you want. Now, just as one extra note that we can look at while we're seeing these different plugins is that Elementor is actually a plugin. So Elementor is going to be something that we can add on features onto WordPress. So to use Elementor, we're going to have to go through that 
add new plugin section and then activating Elementor on our website. If we wanna add a plugin, we can go up here into add new and then we can see all of these plugins. Let's go to popular. So I recommend if you see a plugin that is interesting, you look at how many downloads it has and active installations right here. And then you can look at these reviews and read these reviews and really try to understand what you're getting out of using these plugins. The more downloads and active installations and positive reviews, the better. Installing plugins with only a couple downloads or only a couple active installations might not be safe for your website or your data. So just make sure that your website looks as you expect it to after you install a plugin uh, and make sure that you're getting what you want out of that plugin. Of course, always look at their terms and their code as well. So you really understand what it's doing to your website. So add all of these plugins at your own risk, but know that they are generally pretty safe if millions of other people trust them as well. So of course there are more things we can go into with WordPress, but now we're going to move on into Elementor because most of our work here is going to actually be done in Elementor. So let's go back to our presentation and let's get started with Elementor. Now this is the part we've all been waiting for. What is Elementor? Why are we using it? And what can it do for you? So first, what is Elementor? Elementor is a way for non-developers to create websites. Now, why use Elementor? First, it has over 8 million installations, so it's pretty trustworthy. You have a real-time preview of what you're building while you're building it. You can edit exclusively for mobile, for tablet, for desktop, or for any other screen size that you need to. It's used by millions of people for a variety of different kinds of websites, so it's very flexible from e-commerce to subscription websites to just a typical marketing website. You can even house courses on your website with Elementor and a couple other plugins, or you can have a social media platform that works with Elementor as well. And then the big reason that we are looking at it right now is including everything that is so amazing about Elementor, they also have these pre-made templates that are incredible. So these templates are professionally designed. They don't look like the templates used to because templates used to have a really bad reputation because they would just look terrible. But these ones are incredible. So why use templates? First, we wanna look good. So I always recommend that when you're first making your website, you've probably not made a ton of websites and you're probably not an expert designer at this point. So I am an advocate for learning design through building websites. So you can of course build these websites through trial and error, but they might not look very good. So instead start with these templates, try to ask yourself why things that look good look good, and then just keep editing those and make sure that they keep looking good. Over time that way you'll learn design. Now, I just wanna go over a couple of these templates because they are truly phenomenal. So as of today, here are all of the templates that Elementor has. They have a bunch of specialty ones and they have things for a variety of different use cases. But let's go over a couple of my absolute favorites. First, we have this website that is for an app. So if we wanted to install this template on our website, we would be able to get everything on this page, all of these different pages, and really everything. So we would be able to change these colors, change the logo, these fonts, all of these words. We'd be able to change everything, but we're gonna start with this structure. So I really like this mobile app because we can scroll down, there's some movement here. It really draws my attention to the screen and to the different features that they have. And it's just a really nice website that's pretty simplistic. We have some social proof here at the bottom, and then we have a last ask to download the app. So I really like this, and of course, there are mobile versions of all of these websites I'm about to show you. So next, we have this skate shop website. So this is actually a little different. It's an e-commerce website, 
but we can scroll down and we can just install this e-commerce website in a matter of minutes. So let's just look down here. We can see all of the different things we can buy. And then we can actually see, oh, let's say I do want this long sleeve shirt. Then I can just click add to cart. And then now it's in my cart. So I can click view cart. And now I have this in my cart and I can buy it. Now, if I keep going down, we can see that they have this pop-up as well. So this comes as part of the template. So we have pop-ups here that already look good. They come in usually at a pretty good time. So this looks like it probably came in when I was about 70 or 80% of the way down the page. And we're asking for emails. So this is already set up and it's pretty easy uh, to keep this going and have an optimized website with pop-ups. So we can click off to get rid of that. And then we can see just down here, uh, we have the rest of the website. And now we have this template I'm going to show you. This is for a drone, but it is really just a beautiful website. It, the fade in and out, uh, I really like. So as we scroll down, we can see some different features. Uh, we have some more movement. And I wanna add here too, that it's unlikely that you are a drone company, but you can always change these things to be optimized for your business. We could have this be a picture of your team and this be a picture of your team having fun or doing goofy faces. And this could be the about us section. So there are a lot of ways you could change these templates while keeping the main structure. As we scroll down again, we have a lot of movement really keeps our users attention. And then we have this full screen video right at the end and our footer. Let's do a demo of how to build a website in only 10 minutes. So this website is actually with the free version of Elementor. We can install this all for free. So we can edit any of the text, any of the buttons, the colors very easily. And we can have this fully set up. So we have testimonial sections. We have a bunch of images so we can entice our users in. And we have this header and footer right here. Under our story, we have again a bunch of images. We have more information about us. And then we have a contact page too that lets users contact us, lets them see where we are. So we are going to be building this website all for free with Elementor Free. But first, just to give you some demographics on the site that I'm building on, I am using the Hello theme by Elementor. This is what I use on all of my websites. You don't have to use it, but it is a personal favorite. Under plugins, you can complete this tutorial with the free version of Elementor, but your options of the templates will just be a little bit more limited. So I also have Elementor Pro on this site so that we can use some other templates too. Now that we have that out of the way, let's get started and install this template. We're going to go on this left sidebar to templates, and then we'll go to kit library. Under kit library, here are all of the kits and templates that we can install. You can see right up here in the corner what level of membership to Elementor you need to have. So all of these first ones are totally free. This is a free version one, but as you can see, there are tons of other ones as well. Just click apply kit. We're gonna wanna import all of our templates the content and the site settings for sure. And we can click next here. And now we have our site settings and our four content pages that we were promised. So let's go back to the dashboard. And right here we can see that we have a website set up right here. It is already established. We can edit this page with Elementor and make any changes we want. So now we can edit this text to say, Nathan Mins, and then under here we have this picture and we can just edit this hero go to style and change this image if we want 
Changing all of this is super easy. We just click on an element, go to this left sidebar, and then say, Nathan is awesome, right there. So we can pretty easily add this. Here's a button element. It says our story. We can say about me if we want or about us. And then we can just make this go to any link that we want. So this is super easy to edit. And now we have a full website right here. And at the end, just don't forget to click update. And now we have this entire website set up in only a couple minutes. So I know that might have gone a little bit fast in how to actually edit the site. So I wanna go a little bit deeper into how to do that on any page. So when we're looking at our website, this one is my personal website. We're going to have a bar up here at the top if we're logged in that says edit with Elementor. So I'm just going to click edit with Elementor and I'm going to open this up in a new tab. So after I click edit with Elementor, I'm going to hit this page that has two different main sections. I'm gonna have this left sidebar here and then I'm gonna have my content area. So if we want to just add another header, all I have to do is go over into this left sidebar, find header, and then click and drag into our content area. And now we have another header. You'll see it's all black. So maybe we want to go to style and let's pick a text color, maybe white, or we can pick any other color we want, but let's pick green for now. Now, green does not match the rest of my site, so I might actually click on this globe icon and I can see all of these different styles that I've already saved for my site. So let's say I want it to be red. This red is the same color as that red. So this is a way that we can maintain consistency through our site. These global colors are already going to be set up on your new site, so you really don't have to worry about this too much. But if you do wanna change it, we'll talk about how to change these global colors in just a second. Now we can also do the same thing with typography. We'll see this is secondary typography, but we can go to small heading text or primary or uh, menu, really anything that we want. And of course we can also make it particular to what we're working on as well and change the size or change anything else about this but let's keep this as secondary text. There are of course many features in Elementor. It's a pretty robust software. So I'm only gonna go over the major things. So that is the main things we do in style. And then in content, we can change what this says. So we can say, Nathan is awesome. And you know, that is pretty easy. If we want to add a link in here, we can type in google.com and we can even click on this little icon and open this up in a new tab. So now if someone hovers over this, you'll see the pointer turned into a little clicking hand. This will now go to google.com. We can also change alignment pretty easy. So this is pretty easy to edit your website. The only other thing that we can really do with this that's really important for you to know is if we go in advanced, we can select a margin so we can add a little bit more space uh, throughout this page. So we can say we want 30 extra pixels right on top. Maybe we want 100 extra pixels on the bottom. So this is an easy way to space out your content a little bit as well. But I am going to bring this back just to zero, just as it was when we started. So. Now, if we look at all of these other things that we can add in, we can add in an image, just click and drag. We can add in videos. Really, most of the things that you will want to do, you can add in right here. Of course, we're not gonna go over all of these because there are a lot of them, but just know that each one is going to have the same setup of content, style, and advanced. So you already know how to use the majority of these. Now, before we jump into how to change these global colors and global fonts, I'm gonna talk about 
a couple things that I get questions on quite a lot. So the first one is, how do I duplicate or delete something? So if we wanna do that, if we wanna get rid or duplicate this image, we're going to right click or two finger click on a trackpad and we are going to click duplicate here if we wanna duplicate it or we can right click again and click delete and we can delete this one as well. That is a pretty easy way to duplicate something or delete something. The other questions I get are on these icons down here. So you can click around on these two, but I'm going to talk about the most important ones. So first is this history tab. So if we deleted that picture, but we really want it back, all we have to do is come back here and click on uh, what we deleted. So now we have this image back and it's gone. We have um, a heading with a margin now, and we can go back to what it is right now. So this is a very easy way to see all of your edit history and even see revisions across days. But the most common use is going to be this action tab of you accidentally deleted something and you need it back. The other thing is this icon, responsive mode. We can see what this looks like with tablet mode and on mobile. So we can see a mobile version. We can see on different screen sizes what it's going to look like and it's pretty easy to edit. So if we come back here to our desktop mode, the only other thing before we jump into the colors and fonts on the global side is if we want to preview what this is going to look like on our site, we can just click this little arrow and now we can see what this is going to look like when we actually hit publish. And of course, never forget to click update right here. So this is a very important piece but it is missed quite often. So just when you're done working, just make sure you click update and throughout the process while you're working. So now let's say I wanna change these global colors. Well, it's pretty easy. All I'm gonna do is go into this hamburger menu in the top left of the screen, click on that. I'll click on site settings. And now we have all of these things. Again, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but just to change the colors, all we have to do is go into this colors tab and let's say we want to change the colors of all of the buttons. We're going to click on this bright red and then we can just change this to absolutely anything we want. And you can see that all three things that are connected to this are changing at the same time. This button, this title, and this button as well. So we can change all of those at the exact same time. Um, and it is very easy to edit. Now I'm going to revert this back to what I had before. And of course we can edit any of these. We can do the exact same thing with our fonts so we can see our different fonts and edit these. So this is going to change anywhere where I have a primary headline. We can do different things in here and I encourage you to explore these things but they're set up in a very similar way to the global colors and global fonts. So I encourage you to look at those as well. Of course, when you're done, always click update. And then, although I did delete the Nathan is awesome, always make sure too that you go back to your site and actually explore what you've done so you can see what the visitors are going to see. I also always encourage do it on different devices as well so you can really get a good understanding of what they're going to see. So now that we have done this demo and you understand how to build a website and how to edit it, we're going to just keep on moving on. So this is our outline. We have done this website strategy. We've talked about how the internet works, done a demo and a walkthrough of WordPress and Elementor and actually how you would apply a template. Now that we've gone through all of that, we're going to get into user experience because we're going to be editing our website. We wanna make sure it always looks fantastic for everyone that goes to this site. Let's go into user experience, UX for short, and let's go through the basics. So to think about user experience, we really have to start with how do people and how do we use the internet? So to answer that question, we scan. So in reality, the only person reading the entire website is going to be you. So really, we're not designing websites. We're designing billboards. We are making these billboards. So 
What that means is that we really have two options. We can either tell our users, no, you are not looking at a billboard. You're looking at my website and I'm going to put all of my content on there and make you do all of the work of trying to figure out what is important or we can design great billboards. So we don't want to try to reinvent the wheel, try to teach people how to use the website. We definitely don't want people to hit our website, be overwhelmed by all of our content and then leave. So we need to design great billboards. That first option in reality really isn't an option. So to design great billboards, we have to decide what is important for our user. If we don't, they will just leave the site. So this is how I recommend deciding what is important. First, you write everything down that you think should be on your website. Everything that you think is important. And then we delete 50% of those words. So we just get rid of half of those words. And of course, this is going to be difficult. And then we delete 50% of those words. So we're left with 25% of the original words we had. Now in this process, you have to be ruthless and you have to be ruthless because your users are going to be ruthless too. They're just going to hit your site if they don't understand it or they think that it's not important to them, they just leave. They're not going to give a second chance. They generally will hit the site, think this isn't for me or be frustrated and leave. So what we have to do is make the useful content more prominent on the site and we have to reduce the noise on the page a nice way to design is going to be to have too much white space and then decrease the amount of white space until you have the perfect amount versus starting with too little white space and then increasing the white space until it doesn't look terrible so we really are going to want to start with too much and make sure everything can really breathe on our site. With that, and with the goals that we set at the very beginning, I'm gonna have a special note on buttons because buttons are usually where we are trying to drive users. It's either a checkout button or a add to cart button or a subscribe button. Either way, our buttons need to be great. So we need to talk about how users use buttons. Well, users don't choose the best option available. They choose the first reasonable option. They don't look through the whole site and try to figure out which one fits their needs the best. They just try to pick one that seems pretty close to what they're looking for. On that, everything that is clickable should be very clear and users should know where those links go. On any website that has a contact button, when you are about to click that contact button, it's very clear that you're going to go to a contact page. Every other button on our site has to have the same level of clarity of when I click this button, where is it going to bring me? So users have to be able to identify that something is clickable and that it is a button and they need to know where those things are going to take them. But of course, this brings us to a big question of how do we know what our users are thinking? I mean, I understand where the button goes, so of course my users do too. Well, no, that is not usually how we design websites because you aren't the user. You design the website, so of course you know where everything goes. We need to user test, and there's really no substitute for this. At some point during the first usability test of people's website, everyone says, why didn't we do this sooner? So ideally we are user testing early and often. This is a great quote on design, uh, that the design is not finished until someone is using it. We didn't design this website for no one to use it. So we need people to use it for us to see how they interact with it and see what it's like with them using our website. And again, we want to do this early and often. So testing one person early in the project is often better than testing 50 near the end. So testing before you have already done all of that work is great. So try to do it early, maybe with 
mockups even. If you are redesigning your website, you should user test your current website before you redesign it so that you know what's clear and what could use improvement. And if this is the first time you're building your website, you should user test your competitors' websites. Try to understand what users are confused about with your competitors' websites so that you can really make your website stand out. Now, of course, user testing is incredibly difficult and people spend their entire lives working on user testing. But there are some easy ways to do it. Of course, these ways are not perfect, so please don't think that this is the gold standard of the exact way you have to user test, but this is a pretty good start and it's going to get you set up to actually start building sites that people can use and that people understand. The easiest way to start is we want to watch users in real life use our website. Ideally, users understand what your site provides in the first five seconds of hitting your site. So we want to understand what they're seeing when they go on the site and how they interact with it. But we don't want to show people our site and say, uh, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you think I did a good job? Because of course they're gonna say, I like it, this is great, great job. Instead, we wanna do something that they can't lie to us. Not saying that everyone is going to lie to you, but we want something that we know our data is great and that no one can really try to protect our feelings with it. So we want to ask users to do a task. We want to give users the site and with us standing right there or on a video call, we want to ask users to contact us or buy a jacket or find small pants or join our community. Something like that so that users, we can see how users are thinking about using our site. I have done this many times where I say, just try to contact this company and they can't contact them. Or you try to get them to buy something and they don't know how to buy it. We want to make it as easy as possible for people to give you their money. But sometimes with our designs, it's really challenging. So we have to do these user tests to understand how users are interacting with the site. While we do this, we have to stay quiet and we have to note where they're running into problems. And it's not a time to say, oh yeah, no, you weren't supposed to click that. You were actually supposed to click this instead. This instead is a time to say, can you purchase a black t-shirt in a small size? And then maybe they struggle through it. They might ask you questions, but you can always come back and say, how do you think you do that? Where do you think this button goes? Things like that, that give you more information on what they're thinking. Now, congratulations on completing the course and welcome to this bonus lecture. I am just going to tell you two quick things. The first one is that if you're here because you are doing the Hostinger account setup and you want your 7% off, then that code you're gonna put in is NathanMins7. You can also look at the Google Doc that is linked below this video and that will show you all of the different discount codes that I have that I can offer. Um, so you can really take advantage of those of being a student, um, especially a student of mine, and you can take advantage of those deals I've worked out with the different companies that if you're already gonna use it, you might as well get the discount code. The second thing is that I have another course on Udemy too. It walks through basically how to go from not knowing anything about Elementor and hosting, setting up hosting, setting up Elementor, and then building a full custom site in Elementor. If you want more, you can see more training at nathanmins.com, or if you want this talk given to your employees or some other group that you are a part of, you can also contact me at nathanmins.com. If you want more support on an individual basis, I do coach up and coming designers to improve their business and their website design. And if you saw this talk and you just thought that you did not want to build a site yourself, you can always hire me at bluedropdesign.com. Now in this talk, 
we went over website strategy, what we have to do before we even start building. We talked about how the internet works and why we need to buy our domain and hosting and use a website builder. We talked about how to use one of the most common website builders, WordPress and Elementor, and how to leverage that for our business to create a website using templates in about 10 minutes. And then we talked about how to use user experience to really make sure that your goals are accomplished and that your users understand how to use your sites. If you have questions, you can post those in the comment or question functionality on this platform, or you can always email me through my website, nathanmins.com. Thank you for taking this course. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the reviews and reading the reviews. Um, I respond to them as well. So thank you very much for giving those reviews and spending your time here with me. I hope you have an incredible day. And if you would like to talk to me directly, you can connect with me on my LinkedIn, which is also in that Google Doc. Good luck and thanks.